up. Today is February 1st, 2016, and this is Wayne Goldsboro Television. I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Pat Garner. And I'll move over a little closer here to the picture. Anyway, this is Wayne Goldsboro Television. I'm, I said that, didn't I? Yes. Okay. Hi, Pat. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Appreciate you being here. Kate is out on assignment. Again. Again. <laughs> <laughs> We appreciate you being here, sitting in. You know what? Pat's got a headache today, and she's not feeling too well, so you're a trooper. Yes, I am. Thank you for being here. All right, the brand new month. It is February, and this is some of the things, some of the things happening in the month of February. This is Adopt-A-Rescue Rabbit Month. woo -hoo. Go Bugs. Yeah, Bunny, that is. Uh, American Heart Month. Bake for Family Fun Month. This is Beat the Heat Month. Beat the heat right. month? Beat the heat. Well, you know, it's cold in February. This is the coldest month here in Wayne County, North Carolina. This is also from Africa to Virginia month. I don't make this stuff up. This is real. This is an international boost self-esteem month. Something we can all do and work on. Expect success month. Hoof care month. Hoof Hoof care month, you have hooves in your family. Yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> the four-legged kind, right? Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Library Lovers Month and Love the Bus Month and National Bird Feeding Month. This is Black History Month, of course, and we're going to be doing a lot of talking about Black History Month, a lot of things going on. This is National Cherry Month. And anyway, it goes on and on and on. I'll tell you more during the month. This is Hot Breakfast Month, by the way. Well, that sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. It does. Bring breakfast in the morning. Bring breakfast in the morning. Yeah. Eat breakfast all day. That sounds good. And laugh friendly month. That's just some of the things that we'll be talking about during the month of February. Today is car insurance day. Change your password day. That's always good. You change your password often? Every so often, I do. Every so often. You're not giving me any information, are you? No. I was going to pee. Sorry. Right. Okay. It's okay. Okay. Today is Hula in the Kula Day. I have no oh. idea what that means. I just thought it sounded funny. G.I. Joe Day, Serpent Day, Ayn Rand Day. You remember Ayn Rand, the author? Yes. Uh, Crepe Day. Groundhog Day is tomorrow, by the way. Freedom Day is tomorrow is today. Robinson Crusoe Day is today. Okay. Tomorrow is Groundhog Day. That means it's the absolute dead set middle of winter. Yep. The middle of winter is tomorrow. The question is. If the groundhog sees his shadow, we'll have six more weeks of winter. Now, let's do the math. Winter is 13 weeks long. Okay. Tomorrow is, winter will be six and a half weeks long, which means there'll be six and a half weeks left. Well, I'm sorry, there's 26 weeks in winter, it's a quarter. 26 weeks in winter, 13 weeks we've had, 13 more we have to go. So if it's 13 more weeks of winter, and the groundhog sees his shadow, there'll be 13 more weeks of winter. That's, you know what? That all adds up, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Okay, how about this? It's amazing. But if, he's, if he doesn't see his shadow, then, when, then spring will come early. It can't come any earlier than March 21st. <laughs> Who writes this stuff? Sounds like something I would do, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, okay, sorry about that. Create a vacuum day is the fourth. So when we get to the fourth, I'll tell you all about that. Are you an International Space Station fan? No. Okay, we well should be. Why? No, I, don't, I don't know. That's all I'd ask. The space station can actually be seen the naked eye from Earth. Did you know that? As it flies over. Hmm. I'm serious. And I used, to, I used to, in my previous life, I used to occasionally read out a report about when the space station would be flying over Wayne County so that you could see it. Tonight is going to be the very best to see the space station flying over. It's going to be over for a long time. It's flying over Wayne County and it will be there for five minutes and that's very unusual. Normally they don't last that long. But tonight, five minutes. If you're standing dead in the middle of Goldsboro, in the middle of Goldsboro, and you look toward Fayetteville, you will see it come over the horizon and it will go almost, almost across at about a 50 degree angle, about like that. Okay, about like that. And uh, we'll exit east-northeast. That would be over toward Greenville. Uh, actually, Institute, if you know where that is. 
in that direction. Okay, so it'll be coming from the south southwest, going to the east east northeast, and it's a great big bright. Looks like a star, or a really really high flying plane, and you might think it is, but it's actually our very own International Space Station. And that's very exciting. People love it to watch that thing. It's it's great. And, oh, the time, that will be tonight at 6.28 p.m. If you're there at 6.30, you will only see the last half of it. But at 6.28 p.m., be standing outside looking toward, down toward Fayetteville or in that general direction, out toward maybe Clinton. Okay, and you'll see it. Okay. All right, what else we got? Oh, real quick, we'll go to our break in just a moment. February 6th, Go Wayne Go, Downtown Walk will be February 6th, Downtown Goldsboro, meeting at the courthouse steps right here. And the walk is for one to three miles, and that will include the new Center Street area and the old railroad station. <laughs> All right, go away and go. February 6th, that's uh, this Saturday, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, that is yes. this Saturday. Okay. Boy, we got a week for you. Wait till you see everything we have to talk about and the people we're talking to. All right? Watch this. Office of the Assistant County Manager of Wayne County here on, well, on North John Street, right? Yes, sir, 134 North John. In the Jeffries Building. Yes, sir, second right. floor. Tommy Burns is our new Assistant County Manager, and I say you're new, you've been with us for a while, but uh, first opportunity to talk and kind of introduce you to the masses. We have masses, right? Okay, we do have masses. <laughs> but, uh, Tommy, I wanted to ask you uh, the position of Assistant County Manager. You're our very first. So what, what brought that on why do we need an assistant county manager well you know wayne county is a growing county and with that comes challenges and uh, we've been fortunate through the years that you know mr wood has been here several years now and he's really taken on an active role in moving the county forward and i guess the easy answer would be to say i assist the county manager but uh, we divided a lot of the duties when i first came on board back in december of 2014 uh, we sat down and kind of divided up the job duties. Um, I supervise about nine departments and he supervises the rest. And we tried to do it based on areas where maybe I had more experience or um, and more expertise kind of than, than he liked the airport. Um, I'm a licensed pilot and been around airports for a long time. And so that was kind of a natural fit. Uh, I've got a family that's got an emergency services background. So that was sort of a natural fit for me to work in. And uh, But primarily, you know, I kind of assumed the role uh, of the quote unquote manager for those departments. Mm -hmm. Those um, they report to me, and um, I help them with their budget preparation. And I'm kind of their liaison to the county manager's office and to the board of commissioners for when they have departmental issues. You said you had nine departments under you. So what? Yes, what are we have a list here somewhere? Where are all those departments? Uh, well, the, the Department of Social Services. You know, they're governed by their own board. Yes. And so I'm assigned as kind of the liaison between the DSS director, mm -hmm. the DSS board, and the county manager's office and same thing for public health they have their own board that governs their practices and so the health director and I we kind of liaison directly with the county manager's office um, I've also got the human resources office and okay. uh, that department is probably the one that I spend a lot of my time in um, it, you can as a county manager um, you can really get bogged down in personnel issues because oh, yes. There's uh, something going on, whether it's hiring, it's a termination, it's an internal investigation. And so Mr. Wood, when we were sitting down, we kind of divided that up, and he said, you know, I'd like for you to take that. I've, I've had a lot of training in conflict resolution. And, um, and so uh, myself and Miss Lee, the HR director, we kind of take on um, pretty much any internal investigation in the county that's needed, any disciplinary actions or proceedings, any appeal hearings that we, we cover. Uh, and also, we the positive side of that is we do a lot of the diversity training and uh, departmental training for the for the managers as um, something like employee training or employee orientation or even evaluating employees. Anything that falls under personnel. That's right. Falls under the heading of human resources. That's right. Uh, and then probably the, the largest department that I directly supervise is the emergency service office. Mm, yes. um, that uh, encompasses the 911 division, the fire marshal, the emergency management division, and then uh, the EMS and Wayne Net division. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am the department head for OES. Um, when Mr. Gurley retired uh, back in 2014, that gave the county a chance to sort of revamp 
that department and kind of split those duties up somewhat. And so what created from that was a, an assistant county manager position who was also a department head for OES. And uh, I really enjoy that. We've got a great staff of people. Um, the 911 center, some of the most dedicated dispatch professionals oh, no that you'll find. no question about that. So um, you're, the, you're actually the department head, uh, the, uh, the uh, director of that particular department. And you answer to yourself. Is that, is that the way it works? <laughs> kind of, sort of. Yeah, kind of, sort of. Yeah. Kind of so, sort. How do you like that? Oh, I like it. Well, good. I do, too. So, is that how, yeah. yeah, but, you I know, like we're that. very fortunate in emergency services. Uh, Mail Powers is kind of the go-to man for yeah. emergency services. Yeah. Mail's been with the county over 20 years and yeah. has a lot of experience. And so he is kind of the go-to man that helps me balance that with the other duties that I have. And then uh, I'm the department head responsible for uh, Department of Aging, um, the uh, we you know we have a great director there, Paula Edwards, yes. and I'm kind of Paula's liaison to the county manager's office. And that of course includes the senior center. That's right, Peggy Among Seager Senior. Things. That's right. Yeah. Um, and then the same process for veteran services office. Right. Brenda she reports directly to me, and I kind of help as her liaison to the commissioners and the the um, the board of uh, and Mr. Wood. But probably the job that I spend. Um, Probably the <laughs> I, that I enjoy is what the do you jet enjoy? port. I really enjoy the jet port. The jet um, port. I've been a pilot for a while. Um, I've got a cousin that's an airline pilot, and he took me on my first flight when I was eight years old, and I've just loved aviation ever since. And well, you know, I tell you, I, I would venture to say, Tommy, that we have one of the finer airports in the region. Oh, it's a fantastic it airport. Really, and, and I bet there's a lot of people from Wayne County who've never even been out there. No, and I would encourage them to go out there because we have already completed a lot of projects out there. We've got more on the way. And the airport is, I think, is a hidden gem for it Wayne is. County. It is. Now, we need to make the point that it's not a commercial airport. It's not a commercial airport. We do get some light business traffic, corporate traffic. But it's primarily a general aviation airport. Uh, you'll find your local pilots, um, some with some very storied history and past in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And um, we've got a guy, Colonel Kleber, that fly, used to fly <laughs> gliders out there. And, and he's just an amazing person to talk to. Former base commander Colonel Ray Kleber is an amazing guy. He's in his, uh, he doesn't mind admitting it, he's in his 90s and he's still flying. And, and it's amazing just the history that Colonel Cleaver has. Oh, yeah. I was, a, a few years ago, I flew in to the Harnett County Airport and I, at the time I had my own plane and Colonel Cleaver came up to me. He said, you know, I used to fly that plane 30 years ago. <laughs> 30 years and I, I kind of looked at him and, and he went on to tell me the whole story yeah. about the plane. And it's just amazing that he's still that excited about aviation as he was when he took his first flight. Yes, and a lot of people don't realize he flies sailplanes. He does. Gliders, if you will. He does, yeah. and, and he's the tow pilot, and he's done that for a lot of years, and um, just an amazing story, an amazing American. He really is, and, and, and the, uh, seemingly the best of health, and, uh, and is quite active. That's right. In his 90s. In his 90s, he amazing. still flies. Still yeah. flies every week. He is, yeah. So anyway, we have a really nice airport. How long is that runway out there? The runway is 5,500 feet. Um, eventually, we'd like to, you know, expand that some. Mm -hmm. um, the airport is uh, really an economic development engine for us. We have um, commercial, tra corporate traffic primarily corporate that comes traffic. in. Um, some light commercial occasionally. Uh, but the runway, is. we still need to make some improvements to get some uh, heavier aircraft mm -hmm. in there. I think there's a possibility that perhaps one day this could be just kind of a starting off point and maybe just uh, uh, a small airport that would lead to, say, shuttle to uh, Raleigh, Durham, or perhaps Fayetteville, perhaps Greenville. Maybe long term. Long term. I, I think okay. long term. I okay. think that. Well, I'm hoping, you know. Uh, you know, smaller airports have kind of really had a resurgence in the last few yes. years because of. Uh, you know, the security concerns at the major airports and the congestion and the time delays. And so a lot more people have found general aviation travel to be a, a little more accommodating. A company by the name of Terrafugio is trying to market flying cars. You see that? Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. I've been kind of read up on some of that. Yeah, and, and, uh, and, uh, and they're not the only ones. There are other companies as well. You know, it seems far-fetched, but then when you think across your own lifetime and you see the advances that have been made in technology, mm -hmm. it's really not as far-fetched as you think. No, it's not. And there are actually communities in the country that are, are, that are built uh, residential areas, uh, right. subdivisions, right. with an airport strip in the middle of the, of the residence. That's right. It's like an air subdivision. Exactly. And uh, everybody, they, they have taxiways instead of yeah. driveways. And I've been to a few of those, and they're, they're really unique. And something that surprisingly is, is starting to be a growing trend in general aviation. Very much so. And that, that is very interesting. So what else do you do here? I know that your love is, is flying and that you enjoy the airport uh, and all, all that. So, 
So uh, what, what else do you do? And wh I should actually ask you rather, uh, what do you see happening to Wayne County in the next few years? And, and if you would, nail something down. Give me some specifics. Well, I think uh, Wayne County is in a great position um, where they're, we're strategically located mm -hmm. between major highway corridors, and that's one of the things that, that companies look for for economic development. They want to be able to move their product in and out of the area. I think one of the best assets that we have is our people. Uh, we have Wayne County is home to some of the finest people that you ever meet in Eastern North Carolina. Our hospitality is second to none. True. Our barbecue true. is second to none. That's true. And that's coming from a guy that grew up in Western North Carolina. Oh, shame on you! Where did you grow up? <laughs> I grew up in Shelby in Cleveland oh, County, just west of uh, Charlotte. West of Charlotte, yeah. right between Charlotte and Asheville, yeah. and uh, lived there until I moved off to college. My parents still live there, and my sisters, and still go back there yeah. quite a bit. But that's, that's home for me. That's beautiful country up there, but. Gosh, we like it here. <laughs> I've really enjoyed it here. But uh, you have, you're a farmer. You're from a farming background. You have a farming family, and you are a farmer. Tell me about that. Well, um, both of my grandfathers grew up on farms. One of which was in radio, by one the way. One was a radio announcer there in Shelby for 52 years. <laughs> um, he grew up on a small family farm in North Carolina in Shelby. Yeah. Um, his little claim to fame is he grew up with Earl Scruggs, the oh, no. famous did banjo he really? player. He did. They were childhood friends, remained friends their whole life. Life. Oh, I love Scruggs. Love Scruggs. Yeah. He, uh, I was fortunate growing up, you know, occasionally he would drop by the house. and <laughs> I mean, it was just unique. At the time, I was just a small kid, and I didn't know that, you know, the most famous banjo player in the world really? was – was in my grandfather. Did you ever say who's that? And somebody said, "Oh, that's just Earl." <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I I remember one time I was about ten years old. I asked my grandfather. I said, "Who was that man?" It was over here. He said. Well, son, sit down and let me tell you who that man was. <laughs> let me tell you a story so. <laughs> about a man named Earl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, as far as the farming background, uh, my grandfather Burns grew up on a farm in Alabama, and they moved to North Carolina in the in the 40s. He was in the hosiery business, owned a hosiery mill. And, uh, but I married into a farming family. Uh, my wife is Smart. from Harnett County. Okay. Um, she's lived there her whole life. Uh, she went to school at Campbell. Uh, she has never lived more than three miles from Camel University is that right? her entire life. Is that right? Yeah. Um, her dad um, is a tobacco farmer, yeah. and he is uh, probably one of the last true small town, uh, small acreage farmers around. A lot of the, the smaller guys, as they aged out and equipment costs mm -hmm. grew, um, they started, uh, you know, renting the land out to the larger farmers. Yeah. But he's held on. Uh, he's scaled back the last few years. Um, but I've I've been fortunate. I've learned a tremendous amount from him. We've had soybeans. We've had we've grown sweet potatoes, and he is uh, his knowledge of tobacco farming. I would put him up against NC State scientists oh, as far man. as what he knows about the crop. Well, and, they had, they learned it from somewhere. It's probably him. And and you know his story is an amazing story. He has lived his entire life on that farm. Mm -hmm. That's the only job he's ever had, um, and it's just amazing to see. That way of life still preserved yes. in a little small corner in Harnett County. I love it. Now, were you were you personally, you lived in Lillington, Dunn, or where? Uh, I lived in Anger. Um, I've, I've always stayed right around Campbell. We've um, Our farm is right between Booze Creek and Anger. Anger's um, awful close to Raleigh. Did that spoil you at all? Uh, it Occasionally. You, you know, it's for, uh, shopping trips and, and oh, restaurants. And, and, but, I'm so sorry. But then the traffic is what will make oh, you glad you're in rural North Carolina. Yeah. And, um, well, Anger's a nice town. Anger's a nice town. Um, I, I managed several towns there in Harnett County. Coates and Lillington. Um, yeah, let's talk about that. You were a, sure. you were a, actually a town manager. Been now, a town now, manager now. about the first ten years of my career. Coates is a nice little town, nice little yep. community, crossroads yep. there. I was a manager in Coates, and then I went to Lillington, and then did a few years down in Cumberland County in the town of Spring Lake, uh, and then most recently before Wayne County, I was actually the county manager county. in Harnett County, mm -hmm. county manager there. I mm -hmm. see the. The Campbell Campbell's University Campbell University uh, uh, diploma on the wall, as well as UNC Pembroke, as well as Campbell University again. Yeah, love my are fighting camels. Hey, are those real? Those are real. Are they really? <laughs> those are a lot of sweat equity. Well, I was going to give me some of those. <laughs> you know, but, you know, a lot of sweat equity. I yeah, but a lot of people that know me, uh, you know, we're, we're Campbell fans. Oh, we're yeah. true and true, and. Uh, you, you won't uh, – we hardly miss a football game, yep. and we go to most of the basketball games, and uh, I've tried to bring my kids up uh, with Campbell. But, um, you know, that's it, it's tough sometimes when you're in the middle of all these ACC schools. But I'm a, tr I'm a, I'm a dyed-in-the-wool Campbell Camel and uh, just excited about all the things that are going on at Campbell University. Go Camels. That's right.
Tommy Burns is the Assistant County Manager for Wayne County, USA, here on Earth, and I thank you for speaking with us, sir. Thank but you. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. In Harnett County. Today we're visiting Wayne Nets, Wayne Non-Emergency Transport. And who are we talking, what's your name? Nanette, Nanette Sutton. That's right. All right, Nanette. No, no, Nanette Sutton. Nanette Sutton, where are we now? What's the location of this? We are at 615 North Madison Avenue. And how long are we going to be at this location? Not much longer. Uh, why is that? We have outgrown this building. Wayne Nett has outgrown it, and the commissioners and county manager has um, agreed to move us to Pinewood Fire Department. Used to be Pinewood Fire Used Department. Used to be Pinewood. Yes. They closed that facility down. That building is now available, and this is an ideal location for you. We will also be sharing it with one of the EMS stations. They are there now. Wonderful. And which we share now with an EMS mm -hmm. station, but we will be moving it. It's much bigger. Mm -hmm and a closer facility to the hospital. We see behind us one of the units that's used by Wayne Net, Wayne Non-Emergency Transport, mm -hmm. with their new paint job. This paint job is what, about a year old now, this new design? It's about, yeah, maybe one or two years maybe, old. Maybe two years, but, uh, uh, and, and I'm sure people have seen the Wayne Net out on the streets and such, because you're just everywhere and you're running all the time. But how many people think this is actually an ambulance being used to transport accident victims? Now, it's not for that, is it? It is not. We do back up you do the back EMS, up. but yes. our primary job is to carry non-emergency to the hospital, to doctor's appointments. Um, when I say to the hospital for tests or whatever they mm -hmm. have to have done. Mm -hmm. And we also carry from our hospital to other surrounding hospitals if they are being transported out. Now... It, on the surface, that sounds pretty simple. And on the surface, it sounds like maybe once in a while you'd have to go out and pick somebody up and take them to the hospital. Once in a while. How often do you uh, actually have to go out during the day? Do, do you stay busy at all? Yeah. Does, does anybody have time to take a nap? No. No. Okay, no. why? What's going on? We, what do you do? We stay busy. We run anywhere from five to seven trucks a day. And a, five to seven? Yes. A day? A day. And we have a wheelchair van that we run daily a wheelchair van where someone is is uh, has to use is, is immobile and they have to use a wheelchair to get about yes and you actually go pick them up with the with the the ramp and all we that have a ramp yes and you take them to the hospital we do to the hospital to doctor's appointments wherever they may need to go and you got seven vans that you keep busy all the time seven ambulances that yes so, all right now you mentioned that uh you are backup for the ems mm -hmm. so when ems gets swamped and they can't get to all their calls you're called we go out we'll check in with communications the mm -hmm. 911 center mm -hmm. and let them know that we're in route and you know ems has two qrv medics and a supervisor and qrv what is that quick response vehicle oh i knew that yes mm -hmm. and they're staffed by paramedics and since ems is a paramedic system if we go out and they send the paramedic you know, with us and mm -hmm. go transport if we have to, to the hospital. Okay, and in that regard, it's used just as an ambulance would be used. Yes. All right, now, this is not a free service. It is not. It is not. In fact, you do quite well for the county. We do. Okay. The, the, the fact that you're busy, you have seven vans going all the time, seven ambulances going all the time. Uh, now, who pays you for this service? Does, we, does the 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 patient the client no no yes and no yes and no okay that's a good answer we have a billing company and when we do a trip mm -hmm. we have the patient's inf insurance information mm -hmm. that is exported out to their billing company mm -hmm. they bill the insurance company and what insurance doesn't pay the patient is responsible now as far as the wheelchair vans insurance does not cover in, uh, the wheelchair trips at all really no well, what's their problem? I mean, what's the, is there a reason? They just do not cover. It's just a non-medical service. My goodness. Okay, but other services are covered. Most. Most, most services are, are covered. Are covered. 
Uh, do we ever have a problem with payment? Is that, a, is that an issue at all? Sometimes we do. Mm. Sometimes we have problems with payments. Okay. But still on, on the, on, uh, overall, overall. And, and in general, this part of the Wayne County government, uh, this service is doing quite well. It is doing well. Okay. It is doing very well. Doing well revenue-wise for the county. Revenue-wise for the county, yes. And more importantly, service-wise to those in need of transportation to the hospital, That's to right. the doctor's office. Do you take people for, like, dialysis treatments? We do. We take dialysis. We take, like I said, to the doctor's office. Um, instead of someone calling 911 mm -hmm. to get a ride to the hospital mm -hmm. or to, you know, whatever they need to do, they can call us. Now, as I understand it, they should not call 911 for a ride to the hospital unless it's an emergency. Emergency only. That is correct. Where, not for a doctor's appointment exactly. or, or, you know, x-ray. That is not what 911 is for. Don't call 911 for that. Call no, you. Call us. And, and that number happens to be right there. It's 705-1956. That is correct. Just remember the 56 Chevrolet, the turquoise and white fine automobile. That's all you got to remember. 705, which was my phone number when I was a, a weird l l lad, a, a weird wee lad. <laughs> okay, something like that. Anyway, 1950, 705-1956. That is correct. Okay, and uh, they call you and then what kind of response time do we have? Do you have to set up a schedule uh, to respond or? We would prefer that we are given at least 24 hours notice mm -hmm. for any appointments. Okay. Um, that is our preference, but if something comes up and they don't have 24 hours, just give us a call and we can work you in our schedule the best that we can. Okay, so it's best to make a 24-hour notice and then that way you can arrange a route that's convenient for all parties for all. concerned. That's right. Do you ever carry more than one patient at a time? No. That is absolutely verboten. Do not do, do, not do, not do, do that, that at all? No, not okay. for, we do not have room in the trucks, but for one stretcher. Okay, now who is qualified to administer medical assistance if needed? Anybody? It, 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 let's say if someone all of a sudden has a little problem within the truck, the okay. patient, is there someone on board? Yes, we have EMT basics. Okay. And if it is beyond their scope of practice, mm -hmm. we just pick up the radio and we call for the nearest paramedic truck mm -hmm. to come to us okay. at that time. All right. And there's always one nearby, it There's seems. always one. We have mm -hmm. nine staffed in the county and, like I said, three QRV medics. QRV. Quick response vehicle. There you go. I got it. Okay. So when are you moving? Hopefully by the middle of February. Really? Hopefully. Well, that's what, just very recent. That's it gonna is. Be, that's it coming is. up quickly. Yes, they're working okay. hard on it. Yeah, yeah. And you'll be at the Pinewood, former Pinewood Fire Department yes. building. Now, on that's New Hope Road. New Hope Road mm -hmm. near Berkeley Boulevard. Yes. All right. And, and how will that area, how will that building differ from this one? It's just bigger. Mm -hmm. And we have, you know, kitchen access mm -hmm. and bigger meeting room and office space to put computers so we can get the reports put in and get them done quicker. Quicker. Okay, kitchen, that reminds me, your, your service is available 24 hours a day. 24-7, yes. 24-7. This, these are trucks or staff 24-7. And you have staff actually staying within the facility. They're yes. not like on call uh, and they have to drive over no. to the building. No. You, they're actually living within the, the building. That's right. And when a call comes in, you go. That's exactly if right. If it's an emergency. That's right. Okay. So after that, you move in in a couple of weeks from now, or three weeks from now, you're good to go, right? I hope so. I hope so, too. 705-1956. Yes. That's it. Nanette Sutton is the director of WayneNet, Wayne Non-Emergency Transport. Don't call 911. Call 705-1956, right? That's right. Congratulations on your move, and thank I thank you. you very much. Thank you. We are back on Wayne Goldsboro Television. Thanks for being with us. I'm Wayne Alley. She's Pat Garner. Pat's a little under the weather today, so thank you for doing this, Pat. I appreciate you sitting You're in. You're welcome. For... Kate is on assignment. She'll be back when she's through with her assignment. <laughs> we have our trivia question for you today. I'll give you the question, and you think about it, and then answer the answer. 
I'll give it to you in just a little while, okay? But now today is one that if you're a history buff, you can answer this one before I even ask it. And that's a good trick. Mm. If you're not a history buff, I bet you still know the answer. I bet you still know the answer to this, whether you are a history buff or not. How many stars were sewn on the original U.S. flag back in 1770-something? It wasn't 76, okay? It wasn't. It was done after that. But in the, in the, in the late 1700s, there was a flag created for our brand new nation. How many, there was stars and stripes. And how many stars were actually sewn on to, I'll give you a hint, the stripes, there were 13. How many stars were there? Now, history to some dictates that Betsy Ross was the, was the sewer of that flag. And her family says, yeah, she was the one who did it. We're famous. We've got tons of history in our family. But there are also a lot of people who say, no, she, she just didn't do it. She was a seamstress at the time in the city, but she just didn't do it. So anyway, whomever you may believe, hey, there you go. But uh, the fact is, there was a flag made, had 13 stripes. How many stars were on that flag? University of Mount Olive. They got a lot coming up, don't they? University of Mount Olive is the happening in this happening place because they, have, they do have a lot coming up. Mm -hmm. They have uh, concerts, they've got music, they've got all kinds of entertainment coming up. And this stuff is free. It doesn't cost anything. University of Mount Olive holding a concert featuring renowned pianist uh, Terry Correa. And that will be the 24th of February at 7.30 in the Hazel Waters Carnegie, Carnegie Assembly Hall. And that's at the, at the end of Wooten Street. It dead ends right into it. You, if you're going from Goldsboro, you head right on down Brazil Avenue and then hang a right, right there at the traffic light uh, on Wooten Street. Is that a traffic light? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, it's the Wooten Street. And uh, 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 Korea is from, uh, from Durham and, and, is, and an extremely accomplished pianist. Also at the University of Mount Olive, they've got a hymn festival. So <laughs> anybody who is really into gospel music and hymnals, uh, hymns, uh, there's going to be a festival set for February 18th, and that is this month. At the, at also at the uh, Carnegie Assembly Hall, Wooten Street in Mount Olive. It's, and these events are free, it doesn't cost anything. The festival pro provides an opportunity for students and faculty and staff and everybody to listen to the UMO choirs and sing along with your favorite church hymns. Yeah. Give me that old time religion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the uh, Gateway Transportation Director Fred Fontana, no relation to Wayne Fontana of the Mindbenders, will be at the Peggy Seegers Senior Center day after tomorrow, that's February 3, at 10.30 in the morning. He'll be sharing information on transportation and providing any updates or charges that have been made by GWTA. Guta. <laughs> Guata? Guata. Guata? Yep. Guata. Anyway, Goldsboro Wayne Transportation Authority. Also be an opportunity to share with him any concerns you may have. Seniors may give Mr. Fred. Mr. Fred! <laughs> <laughs> Feedback on their experiences in receiving transportation through Guata. And for information, you can call Paula. Miss Paula. Miss Paula's number is 919-705-1928. The year after Lynn Burke flew across the Atlantic. So just remember that. It's a mind, mind, there you go. The thing, the mind thing. What do you call that? Association. 705-1928. The monitors are headed back. They must like this place. The, the monitors are coming back to the Peggy M. Seeger Senior Center. You remember the monitors, the old uh, uh, doo-wop uh, uh, group. They'll be there February 19th at 7 o'clock, and the uh, seniors are encouraged to join in and enjoy great music and information about African Americans' contribution to music. You can choose to sit and enjoy the program or just get out and boogie. Woo! Boogie! You boogie? No. Oh. Anyway, uh, they're also going to have light refreshments. She's got a headache. Also <laughs> light refreshments. The event is free and sponsored by the Wayne County Arts Council. Funds for the project were supplied by the Arts Council Wayne County Grassroots Subgrant Program. Subgrant Program. For information, call Ms. Paula. And her number is 919-705, the year after Lynn Burke flew across the Atlantic. 
1928. Okay, okay, Mind Association. There you go. Whose number? Paula Edwards, Ms. Paula. It's what? 705-1928. No. No? No. What's her number? Have you got them wrong? Whose number is what? Her number is 1728. Okay. So everything that I have said up until now, <laughs> scratch. <laughs> Just forget it. It never happened. 705-1728. <sighs> Seventeen I'll tell you what. Call the senior center and What's ask for number? the number. What's that number? I forget. Just call 705-1785. How about that? Or call the chamber. 734-2241. There you go. Or call 705-1785. You know, I really don't recall. I would say call Wayne Alley, but. Well, my, where's my email address? There it is. Got that? That's the email address right there. There you go. At the bottom of the screen. <laughs> Both of them were. <laughs> <laughs> right to that oh, address Wayne. right there. You see right there, it says uh, Wayne.Alley at WayneGov.com. That's what it says right there, Wayne.Alley at WayneGov.com. Pardon me for reaching across and trying right. to Right. Okay. Or you can email Kate. Or email Kate at kateD at waynecountychamber.com. we got to go. It's uh, We're out of time. We're going to do this again bright and early tomorrow morning, unless it's noon for you right now. And don't trivia. forget, we got to give the trivia question. Thank you very much. There were 13 stripes and 13 stars. That's right. There you go. 13, okay. and of course, that soon changed. We soon had 15 states. And when they went to 15 states, they put 15 stars and 15 stripes on. So they said, now wait a minute, there's only so much room for, 50, for stripes. So they went back to 13 later on, and then they just increased the number of stars. Hey, look it up. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. at noon and 5.30 p.m. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hog the program today, but you're gonna have to, uh, you're gonna have to just kind of tone down a little bit. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow I feel better. I know, I hope so. Anyway, until tomorrow, I'm Wayne Alley. I'm Pat Garner. And this is Wayne Goldsboro Television. <laughs> that camera. That camera right there.